When I tried on these boots, oh, they felt so good that I just felt like dancing. Such is often the reaction of women when they try on a pair of felt boots for the first time. Today, the craft of making wearable items from this rough country wool carries the modern-day fashionable name – felting. Ukrainian craftsmen make a wide variety of items from felt. The technique of felting allows for making clothing, accessories, interior items, pictures and even toys for children. Felting is a part of my life, a way to express myself and show my ideas to the world. I believe that these little toys bring happiness and a good mood to people. That is what makes them worth creating, and that is exactly what inspires me. To start felting, you need a set of materials, such as cardboard wool, a needle with a diameter of 36 to 38 millimeters, and some kind of working surface. Some use a washcloth for that, while others use special brushes. After the work is finished, you might need a reverse felting needle if you want your toy to be fluffy. Now there is a very large selection of needle diameters, from thickest to thinnest. And there are even special needles for the convenience of felting masters. There are special holders that can hold seven needles at once. This is a very convenient instrument for felting, especially when it comes to making toys of larger sizes. Felting is basically wallowing. Felting is the English equivalent of the word wallowing. This felt is wallowed by hand. You can make all kinds of things by felting. By and large, felting is a very old technique. Referring to history, yurts in Central Asia also felted products. However, today this craft is at an entirely different level. While earlier felting was perceived only as a technique for making boots that are great for retaining warmth in severe winter temperatures. Today felting is used for making elegant, original feminine items that keep you warm in winter and totally light in summer. But this technique allows for creating more than just clothing and footwork. Indeed, it is also used for making beautiful interior items, paintings, pillows, rocks, even lampshades that look absolutely wonderful. And of course, children's toys. Ten years ago, this technique was not yet known in Ukraine at the modern level that it has reached today. It originated in European countries where sheep breeding is developed. Those are Italy, England and Germany. Raw materials are mainly purchased there. But their felting is at an amateur level, while our level is very high and professional. Because, as you know, our women are very talented, and there is practically nothing they can do, and they do it at a very high level. Felt goods are not as popular in Ukraine as abroad, mainly because the level of incomes is considerably lower than in more developed Western countries, which means simply that many people cannot afford such luxurious handmade toys. Many Ukrainian craftsmen mainly sell their works abroad. In my opinion, it is very important to find your target audience. Toys, clothing and women's handbags are all popular. Handbags and clothing are more popular among older ladies who prefer handmade clothing, while toys are more popular among people who have unusual hobbies and love animals. In my case, it all started purely by accident when I stumbled upon the group of Tatiana Barakova, where I saw all these toys, dogs, cats, you name it. I started wondering how that was all made and what technique was used. So I started searching for information on the internet. And then I realized that it was what I wanted to do because wool is a material that will help me bring my idea to fruition. After I saw these products made of felt two years ago, 
I decided to try it myself. I began to enjoy it when I started actually making something with my own hands. And now this pastime is the love of my life forever. Сейчас появилось намного больше возможностей, чем лет пять так назад, для того, чтобы заниматься творчеством, а именно валянием. Появилось много магазинов, где можно купить шерсть любых There are much more opportunities for creativity today than there were five years ago, especially in Felton. There are many shops where you can buy wool of any color. You can find both merino and cardoche, which are different varieties of wool for wet and dry felting. I heard about a factory in western Ukraine where wholesale wool is very cheap. There are many online stores that let you choose any color you can possibly dream of. About five years ago I first heard about felting and tried it when I was visiting my friend. She gave me some wool and a needle and tried felting for the first time. It was interesting and fun, and then I forgot about it for a year. But later I became seriously involved in felting. I found this toy that we had made and a wad of wool and thought to myself, I want to try that again. And I've been doing it ever since. There are two kinds of felt, dry and wet. Dry felting is a process that involves a special needle or a set of needles. This technique is mainly used for making toys because wool is an energy-intensive material. Among other things, toys made applying that technique are very lifelike and really plastic. What felting is used for voluminous things, those made on templates like clothing, shoes or accessories. There is also a totally separate direction of this craft, felted pictures. Wet felting can be combined with dry felting, especially in my case with toys. It can be used to make an animal's torso. The body can be made by wet felting and the model by dry felting, because dry felting conveys the image, emotions and expression that the toy carries better. Between dry and wet, I opted for dry felting, because this technique is large scale, that helps you realize any idea, any facial expression or any image. I like it more because when I was a child I really loved drawing, inventing my animals and watching all sorts of cartoons about fabulous and mythical animals. And I had a dream. I really wanted to make my drawings come alive and make them large and real life. Now I am my own director. I come up with ideas myself. I like starting the process of making a toy with sketches. I'm a perfectionist, because I'm always critical about my works, and I think that I'm still in search of my style. But other people say that my works are recognizable from photographs and by the facial expressions of my animals. I have also recently started making my new race of creatures that immediately became very recognizable. Поначалу нет, мне не, не было сложно вначале, потому что это был фан, просто такое в удовольствие. Подруга сразу. It was not difficult at first because I was doing it for fun. My friend gave up on it after the first felting. She didn't really enjoy doing it, so she gave me all her needles and wool. Felting is a painstaking job that requires a lot of free time. There is an opinion that small toys don't take much time to make. Actually, that is not true. Making small toys is also very painstaking work that requires a great deal of attention. Besides that, the needle is very sharp, so you frequently break your fingers. Of course, not intentionally. I love to make the toys to certain people. I like felt and toys for certain people. For example, if I'm making a gift for one of my friends, that would be a small animal. I know exactly what animal it's going to be because I associate every person with some kind of animal. There are always clearly visible features in their appearance. But it is sometimes very difficult to felt toys for a store because I don't know who is going to buy them. So I just let my imagination go and do what I feel like doing. Recently, Ethnistia started gaining popularity. 
I'm noticing more and more that people are trying to dress their toys into national clothing and elements of Ukrainian culture. Felding is not traditional in Ukrainian principle. It is not like embroidery. But those who have been to the Carpathians know that the sphere of handicrafts existed there for a very long time. But it is very specific, very local. If we talk about fashion pelting, if we can call it that, then it is of course more prevalent in the nation's capital, Kyiv, and other large cities. Of course, you can learn felt now. It was very difficult 78 years ago when I was just starting. That was primarily because no one knew virtually anything about this craft. The Internet of Craftsmen who came to us were the main source of knowledge, but it was still quite problematic. Now training is at a high level, or you can find some technique or self-training using ill work circles, depending on what tasks you set for yourself. When I saw works of the masters, I wanted to try it for myself. So I started looking for worthy masters who could teach me how to do it. But unfortunately, I couldn't find anyone. I watched video tutorials, but those only taught basic things. There was nothing sophisticated about it. For that reason, I decided to study it myself and learn how to master this craft. I think there is some competition. In fact, I sometimes meet girls that do felting. We are all on friendly terms with each other. We communicate, we even help each other by exchanging needles and advice. I'm glad to communicate with them and sometimes I even learn something from them. It also seems to me that I teach them something new as well. There are many events organized that are connected with fashion in general and felting in particular. Those are not just fashion shows, but also various exhibitions of handicrafts. I took part in regular festivals and charity festivals. At one of such festivals, I tried teaching kids how to do felting. I really enjoyed it, and that was just the experience that made me organize master classes myself. Я принимала участие в выставке Модна лялька один раз и с удовольствием бы поучаствовала еще в других выставках. I took part in the exhibition Модна лялька once, and I'd love to participate in other exhibitions because that is very interesting. You can always find new acquaintances and new ideas for inspiration there. What I'm doing now is my hobby, but I want to develop it into something more worthwhile. In the future, I would like to open a place where all creative people could gather to fell, draw, sculpt from polymer clay, and simply communicate. Something like an art cafe, but a creative art cafe. This way you will offer people the opportunity to hold master classes, create works, communicate with each other, and get acquainted with people that have new creative ideas in this fascinating craft.